Why do these big name publishers have the rights to such amazing games? Feels like every time I start to stray away from mainline AAA games, something pulls me right back in. And the news that happened today certainly did just that. Because we have GTA 6 release time revealed, Activision also reveals a new studio that's supposed to be the state of the art and next generation gaming experience and 343 talks about the match composer and a little bit more. So make sure to watch the video to stay up to date with gaming and to catch the secret comment of the day. How exciting. Like and subscribe, but let's get right into those details. And yes, you heard me right. The reveal time frame for GTA 6 was just revealed by Take 2, so this is legit. And the release date of Grand Theft Auto 6 is set to be in fall of 2025, so next year, which is kind of what I expected the release time frame to be. Wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to release this very well done trailer. You can see that this game is looking well pretty much ready to go, visually at least and to have it this polished, you would think, okay, we're gonna be around the corner of a new GTA game. And that certainly ends up being the case. And that's kind of what was my prediction as well with looking at this trailer, deciding the timeframes and things like that. I mean, it's been so long since GTA 5 released back in 2013. Though it's not all sunshine and roses right now for Take-Two as they apparently lost $2.9 billion in the last quarter, which is just, outstanding i can't believe that's even like a number that could be fathomably lost in a single quarter so how does something like that even happen well apparently they lost anywhere from 170 to 150 million dollars for the quarter but then for more losses they had a 2.18 billion dollar goodwill charge hit them pretty hard and on top of that some acquisition charges on top of that so like yeah, they got hit pretty hard this quarter, but I mean, it's GTA 5 money, you know, it's, they're going to be doing just fine. But of course, when I hear this kind of news of this much money being lost, it makes me think, okay, who's getting cut? What studio's getting shut down? I mean, these execs need to afford their fourth or fifth summer home, right? Well, Take-Two recently did just go through a round of layoffs as well. Not massive, right? I believe this was like a few percentage points. A 5% laid off, which again, this company this size, 5% is still a lot of people. But according to Take-Two's chief, he says that they're not anticipating any further cuts to come. I guess it happens to be a benefit when you have GTA money, saying we feel they're in a very good place right now. We've made our three cost reduction programs in recent memory. So I'll have to take them at the word at that point. I hope there are no more cuts. It's been a rough couple of years for the gaming industry, for people who are working in the industry. It's just crazy to think that you can lose $2.9 billion and be like, nah, we're good, we're fine. With the summer reveals coming around here pretty soon, I'm hoping we get some more information about GTA 6 and what the game is gonna be like. Cause even though, like I said, this trailer does look fantastic and does look to be a good representation of what the game is going to be, we still want to see like what kind of mechanics are in the game. You know, what's, what does the gameplay actually look like? This is all very cinematic in-engine kind of stuff, right? Nothing really that can be like, okay, that's how the guns will fire. This is how the movement of the game kind of works. This is how you steal cars and things like that. So we could hopefully see around with this round of reveals happening here in June, specifically with Microsoft. PlayStation just announced here that they're having a big reveal soon. EA is going to do their big thing as well. Of course, this is take two and they can probably just run at their own pace, kind of like what Nintendo does, right? Because they just make so much money off of just GTA 5 alone that they can just kind of do whatever they want and people will just flock right to it. This trailer broke records when it released, right? I mean, it's sitting at 190 million views right now. so. People will know when GTA 6 information releases. And some more AAA gaming news, they keep dragging me back in because when I hear this, I get really excited. And that is this brand new studio being created by Activision, now technically Microsoft and Xbox. The studio is called Elsewhere Entertainment. And they're exclusively focused on creating a new narrative-based game genre-defining AAA franchise. Don't take my word for it. That's literally what they said right here on the website. Even citing they have talent from games like The Last of Us, Uncharted, The Witcher, Cyberpunk, Destiny, Tom Clancy's The Division, and Far Cry, which is gonna be kind of crazy to think about. Now when I hear all that, I think, okay, this is definitely going to be an open world game, right? At least you would think so, because when you get games like, what, The Witcher and Cyberpunk, and I guess you can kind of throw Destiny a little bit in there, but definitely Far Cry, like, this is going to be another like open world, large scale narrative driven game, which I find just kind of crazy that this is even possible right now, given the fact that the state of the gaming industry and how people are kind of closing things down, not really being too adventurous with their funds, right? Like, this is a big risk, right? 
making an entire studio on top of that making it a game that's like a single player open most likely open world type of experience which these type of games are extremely labor intensive and use a lot of like one time use assets, right? I was just thinking narrative based drama defining AAA game and like that would be something you need to make sure you have all your eggs in a row, I guess is the right, right way to put it or something like that. But basically saying like, you gotta make sure you have enough money in the bank to be able to fund something like that because that's an expensive venture and if it misses, it really misses like bad but given how so many m major multiplayer games out there nowadays are really just kind of limping in and then just feels so stale and doesn't really get me excited to play games anymore right though so this could be a great way for activision to try to one try out a new ip for once and then two also find a way to get some more prestige to their name hopefully brush away a little bit of that tarnish that's on their name right now but of course you know it's activision they're gonna try to milk that puppy as much as they can but when you think about it all the major games out there that get rated the highest are generally single player games i mean if you look at this game of year 2023 baldur's gate before that Elden Ring. I actually did not realize that it takes two one game in the air back in 21. And then you had The Last of Us Part 2 that won in 2020. I mean, you gotta go all the way back to 2016 when Overwatch winning game of the year, which I find just kind of wild to think nowadays, oh, how the tables have turned. My biggest thing when looking at this though, makes me think, how are they gonna monetize this? Cause this isn't gonna be like a simple like $70 fee to play the game and you get everything you want. Like we're talking about Activision here, right guys? Like. This is one thing where like it gets me excited. It seemed like this level of talent, right? That they mentioned all these amazing games that they grab talent from, but then you know that it's going to be also Activision in charge of the whole thing, which we know it's going to be a little intrusive to the gameplay experience. I don't know. The news is so early on this right now that it's kind of tough to figure out like what's going to be of this, what's going to happen. I mean, we're so early in this, so like I would highly doubt that we'd see anything when it comes to like even a trailer from this studio for the next like two maybe even three years but it's another big game thing to track to get me excited to keep spending my money in gaming and as i promised to you guys on this channel i'll never stop talking about halo and we have some information about halo infinite and the match composer which is the first time we've heard any kind of details about the match composer since it was announced like months and months ago on this Reddit post here, a person was talking about Halo Infinite playlists and where the objective go. I honestly didn't really get that much traction, like 58 likes, it's kind of like whatever. Basically, someone just kind of saying they wish they had like an objective only playlist. And actually the community director at 343 Sketch actually replied to this saying, personally, I've always preferred objective over Slayer, and yet I've always been in the minority. Feels bad. Going all the way back to Halo 2, Slayer has been exponentially more preferred than Objective, and pretty much every Objective-centric playlist eventually died. But here comes the Match Composer part here, saying, That said, I am excited for Match Composer functionality to come to Infinite, so we can just choose to only search Objective modes if we desire. Just hope enough people feel inclined as well. And that's kind of touching on two parts about this when it comes to Halo in general. Like one, it's gonna be great to see like team objective will most likely be an option within the match composer, giving the players the choice to play how they want. Crazy to think about that. It's funny to think that we went, we went, we started out with four playlists, right? Like we started out with quick play, bot boot camp, big team battle, and ranked arena. Which honestly, for me worked out fine for me because those are the modes I like to play, but really you only had like three actual plays because you bought boot camp, you can't really count as its own individual matchmaking playlist, right? And to not even have a Team Slayer option right there at launch just blows my mind. And it's, you know, it took us a while to get there, but we got there. Which is funny to think two and a half years after launch, we're finally getting the ability to play how you want to play. And you know, it's your fault if you can't find a match, you know? It's one of the downsides of Halo's community where it has such a large pool, but it's rather shallow because there isn't a whole lot of people to play Halo, right? So you can't have a million different players because it divides up the player base too much. So I totally get 343's objective of just trying to streamline the player base of the playlist as much as they can. But you know, you gotta have like your team slayers, but you gotta mix some new ones in, which might not be as popular. We don't have any word of when this match composer will come into infinite. Most likely it'd be tied into one of the operations, maybe the next operation coming in next month, or maybe the one that's coming in July. But you know I'll cover it on the channel when it comes around. Now the Banished Honored 
operation has been fine, right? We got a couple new maps that came in like right before the badge owner operation came in. You got a decent operation pass, the exchange came in, things like that. It's been like pretty okay. But what if I told you it was actually supposed to be even better? And our favorite little leaky boy, Rebs Gaming over here, talked about how it looks like the Spiker was originally supposed to be part of this operation. So this was planned out long in advance. Here's some concept art. Looking at this armor set, which looks so good. This looks so amazing. And we see him holding spikers and this armor set basically looks exactly the same as it is in game. So this is more just kind of general concept art of like what to expect, everything that kind of just looked like when it's all together. But the one thing we don't see in game are these spikers. We even see this knife in the trailer. Sadly enough, that knife is a cosmetic and not an actual knife you can use in the game though. But seeing this just makes me wonder like how much content really was planned for Halo Infinite, right? How much is left on the cutting room floor that we're just never going to be able to see the light of day because maybe there was people at the team who were supposed to get that extra little 10% to get that piece of content over the hill so it can be playable for players to jump in and experience, but maybe they were laid off or now 343 we know it has put their focus on a new experience rather than trying to live up to the hype of the 10 year plan for Halo Infinite because that's clearly not happening. But when I see this, to me, this basically confirms that yeah, the Spiker was going to come into the game at some point, but sadly enough, it's just never going to happen. Probably the same thing as like the Falcon that we've seen plenty of times as well. Plenty of other leaked out weapons that are just half baked, 90% complete, but just not ready to be put onto matchmaking. I know I saw a lot of people in my recent comments talking that they want to see some new weapons and vehicles coming to the game. I mean, let's be real though. I think 343 even said this as well, that they view Halo Infinite as content complete, meaning that like content that's going to be coming to the game is already in the game if that's kind of what that makes sense to you i mean sketch even said in an interview that they are looking to go on beyond infinite so like their focus isn't on this game the focus is on what's coming next but honestly like even if the spiker did come into halo infinite and like i wouldn't really honestly care that much like it wasn't really even that good of a gun to begin with it looks awesome totally fits the vibe of the banished and things like that but like Okay, the 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 spikers in the game, but like, what, what does that do? It gives you like a somewhat okay fully auto close range weapon. Like, that's the kind of the thing we're talking about here. With like, I think the reason why they decided to move on after Infinite is because like they could just add in weapons like this. They could add in the Falcon, but then like, what would that do? That just more satiate the player base that's already there. You're not gonna be getting more players back in, and then the content that would be added back into the game just really isn't that exciting. So I kind of see where 343 is coming from of just like, you know, kind of ties and like, okay, we'll just make something new and then, you know, we'll just sustain infinite for what it has right now. You know, if you stuck through the video this long, I appreciate you. If you want to know what the secret comment was, it would be a black heart in the comments. If you see that in there, you'll know that you've got some real ones in the chat. But I hope I earned a like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Peace out.